afternoon talk here today. We're going to be speaking with QCT's product marketing manager, Alan Chang. He'll be speaking about composable resources with QCT RACGO R. Uh, it's actually more people than I expected. So. <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining the, joining the speech. So today I'm going to talk about Rico R and hopefully you have heard enough and have a little bit of fun on um, what our uh, president might be saying and what we're going to say. I'm going to go a little bit more detail and then see how you might feel about it and how you'll be here for the rest of the day so you can have any questions. All right, so let me kick you off by saying something about the Red Bull Hard. Right? Um, one of the go for the product we've been for 2017 and 2018 is try to educate and help our customers saying, hey, reimagine the unthinkables, right? There's a lot of conventional ideas that we feel like, hey, couldn't be changed, and, but we try to break that barrier, allowing um, the ecosystem to adapt new technologies, and then also try to do a little bit more disruptive, and then bringing some of the new things to our customer, and hopefully help them to actually stay competitive in their respective market. So I think earlier, Mike saying we have a really good history, a long history, about in, um, enabling our biggest hyperscale um, cloud service providers, right? So um, with all this history, there's one thing we really, really learned is when you grow into a particular stage or size, there's a lot of challenges you would never imagine or not seeing when your scale is a little bit smaller, right? And how does this hyperscaler overcome all these problems? Um, they, what they did is actually spending, um, spending a lot of money and hiring a lot of engineering resources in-house and working with people like Quanta and solving all these problems. And when we bring our QCT brand to the market in 2009, one of the goal is bringing all these philosophies to the wider public, I would say free, and then helping the data center actually become more efficient in general ways, right? Not just really focus on the hyperscalers, right? We feel like there's a bigger market, there's way much more data center that was built out outside what Facebook was building and Microsoft was building. And then everyone should be able to in enjoy those learnings or that we have learned from the hyperscalers. So why hyperscalers? One of the trends we've seen in the past couple of years is like the hyperscalers are I would say cross-vertical, I, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but um, they are penetrating other verticals and then like the conventional telco, we'll say, right? Uh, for instance, Google is bringing Google Fiber to California and then Facebook was providing free Wi-Fi to a lot of regions that originally didn't have Wi-Fi at all. Amazon, AWS, Netflix, and all this, you can name pretty much everything. Why? One of, one of the million dollar questions that we always get when like, our customer comes to us and saying, hey, um, you have been working with this hyperscale so often. The million dollar question is why can they do the same thing, right? Um, we, yes, we are a little bit smaller scale, but why can't we do the same thing? And how do I protect my respective market from this cloud service provider penetrating into the, to my market? And I think the answer we always give to the customer is the hardware efficiency. When we start looking at their infrastructure, we see there's a lot of waste of resources. And sometimes they don't even know there's a waste. And they just feel like, hey, this, this, this is how we do, um, this is how we've um, been doing for 20 years, 10 years. We're not ready to change. And, but when that mentality sticks, you would just never change, right? And then this hyperscaler or the CSP, they would, they would use a different way and be very, very um, competitive to in your market and, and you have to respond. So that's why and we feel like we want to bring the Rego R into the market. So let's look at the, the most common data center challenges that we have heard from our customers. It's like 
my server, my storage, I'll probably utilize at 50%, right? There's always season, um, down season, up season. But my average was utilizing by 50%. And I don't know how do I increase that utilization at all. And the second thing is they grow their data or their infrastructure like probably somewhere around 18 months. And then they double it, they double it, they double it. But they sometimes not necessarily needing the computing infrastructure to catch up with the data, but they have to buy it as a bundle from the OEMs because that's how the conventional way of works. So even though you just need storage, but you have to sometimes just buying the computer at the same time. And you were, again, that computer was sitting there doing nothing, and your utilization rate just dropped again. So how do they overcome this? And the business is growing faster, and then this problem becomes bigger and bigger. It's like a snowball just keep rolling, and they, they don't have a solution to it. So when Intel <coughs> introduced uh, this aggregation, uh, the red scale design, uh, about, I will say, five years ago to Quanta, we, we feel like, yeah, this does really solve a lot of problems that our client couldn't solve back then. And why this aggregation? Again, like I said, there's a lot of different rate of growth in different perspectives. Sometimes you have the storage going faster, sometimes you have compute need going faster, sometimes you just have networking. And then all this is in the different ratio, different path, and then you just, you just don't know how to control all this, right? So when you having the disaggregation, what you can do is taking this racks as an example. This is how you traditionally will probably buy things from OEMs, right, or quanta. It's like you're buying a rack, it's very specific to one application, it's very specific to the one thing that you want to do. And when there's a new service was introduced by, by your competitor and you want to do the same thing, you have to go through the very lengthy um, procurement cycles and then figure out what kind of stuff you want to buy and then choosing the vendors that you want to buy from. And then that's just way too much of time. And then today, time is money and then speed is money. And by the time you respond, you are, you are, you're late, and then your, com your competition is already eating the market or having a majority share of the market. So if you imagine, you can recompose all the existing hardware that you have in your, in your disposal, and then recompose it in a different configuration or different behavior, just based on your current need, not the needs like you need five years ago or the need you have 18 months ago, but recompose it to what you need today. And wouldn't that be really beneficial? So this is the basic concept of what we want to do. But in order to do that, there's actually a lot of work, right? By saying it, hey, I want to recompose it. I would just want to do whatever I want to do. That, that sounds like a right way to do. But when, when we start looking deep inside how the technology works and how everything was interconnected to each other, you still are finding a lot of challenges you have to overcome. So as a very, um, I would say, a leading provider in technology or a hardware, um, for us is basically come back to our root and saying, hey, if this is the concept, how do I, what do we need to change? And what other things I might have to bring to the market in order to make this whole thing work? Intel, as a really good technology leader in computing, they will come out with a concept saying, hey, let's focus on the compute first, and then let's do a recomposable compute and the storage and see how that works out. But quanta, we do see a lack of uh, 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 consideration in the networking side of it. And then because we have done uh, networking, storage, and compute all together, so we just feel like uh, in order for this to actually do really reach the market that we want to reach and really solving the problem that customer are having, we have to have all this computing, networking, and storage all together mapping into this entire concept, not just compute, or not just storage, or simply not just networking itself, right? All three things has to work together under the single management ability in order to get this concept to really work out, right? So in terms of the hardware side, we kind of redefine the way we want to do the compute. We redefine how, what kind of components we really need in terms of the, how the storage, um, the JBuff, or the NVMe drives, or how the FPGA and GPU, 
or even a networking switch, management switch has to be, to be defined. So we're really happy and excited to say, hey, Mike made the announcement, Rico R, it's available today. And then you can actually purchase all these building blocks available from our website. And then we actually offer an, an, what we call a POC for you to access um, the, what our solution center and then for free and then allow you to actually have access to the, all the software stack that you can actually play with knowing what kind of capability that we have. So we didn't stop at the, just the hardware side, right? For us to really make it work, we have to invest ourselves in the software engineer to make the compatibility between the, the open stack, the windows, um, the, the hypervisor level of it. So all this API is actually Broom um, designing in-house by Quanta, right? And we know we serve a lot of different customers and every different customer has a little bit different needs. So we just want to own this software capability in-house to make sure when my customer having a need of tweaking things here and there, we were able to provide that, right? We have a really good fundamental of all the stuff that we're offering as a standard, but we want to give that flexibility back to the customer because again, you might have a different thought, you might have a different idea to make you competitive, and we want you enable you to, to reach that goal, right? So, one of the market that we really targeted is actually um, the, I would say telco, right? Um, telco has very complexity um, uh, of infrastructure compared to the CSP. CSP is a little bit more homogeneous because they sometimes they're serving one um, application and they're serving maybe a limited of um, services and then that's how they grow. But for telco or the comm service provider, they're just having way too many legacy uh, baggage they have to do, I would say, because conventionally they were, they, were, they, were, they were having a lot of different services for different needs. So when you have all this, um, like I'll give you an example, like OpenStack, VMware, or you have different geolocation of different data centers, right? Running different things. Someone's running a payment application on, on one data center and someone's running a, um, a, a phone billing system on the other side. All these are required different, uh, different applications. And when that does, how does a CIO or CTO can have a really good way of seeing how everything was utilized and then recompose or reallocate the re resource that they are not using to something else? So that's why all this stack is really important. And then that's why how the, um, the Quanta, also the software stack, what we call it QSM, Quanta System Management, um, can actually allow our customer to, to, to see things through different hyper, hyper, hypervisors, right? So that's one of the benefits. So another thing, like I mentioned, we talk about the switch portion of it, right? Switch is really um, what everything was put together and how everything was connected together. So we have this so-called um, new, uh, new way of management ability. I, I don't want to go into detail, some of the detail that please contact our salespeople for it, but there's a lot of management ability that we actually can do if you get a management switch from our end, and then we can have the ability to actually knowing where that switch was connected to, what kind of server was connected to, what kind of storage was it connected to, and at a very different location. For instance, you have three data center location. We know that switch, when that switch was connected to a new devices you, you have, you purchase, then we will know that server was actually connected to, a, I would say, a data center A physically. And then, of course, you can recompose the resource in a virtual way and, and use it. But sometimes having that visibility of where the hardware was locally and physically help you to actually move things around too. So that's one of the things we also want to bring into the market as a value add for our customers. So um, kind of say what QSM can do is kind of, yeah, resource summarize and compose and working with a lot of different hypervisors. Right now, yeah, OpenStack is probably one of the things you can do today and would very aggressively working with VMware and Microsoft to actually bring that capability all together as well and working with the API uh, with all this hypervisor. And then you can control, monitoring, maintain all these different things all together under one software. And the reference hardware that we bring in today pretty much 
will be something you you have uh, in your data center today. Is the from the compute side of it, from the so, uh, the storage side of it, from the maybe a serrating uh, GPU FPGA side of it, and then of course the switch. So this will be the reference hardware that we were providing in our solution lab for you to access to, and then but we didn't stop there. All the entire quanta lineups in our scalable uh, processor platforms going forward, which is the 2017 platforms, going forward, we are fully committed to this concept and everything will be compatible. So from everything that you will need, from the cache load balancing or hosting kind of system to even to the Hadoop Spark kind of applications, we will have a respected platform that works for it. And then for big data, object storage, we will have a respected uh, platform supported in memory computing as well. So that's kind of the overview that we want to give it to you. Like um, for the entire stack, um, RSD is going to be one of the things we want to um, um, help customer to help utilizations and then also um, help you solve some of the problem or challenges that you might have today. So that's pretty much everything I have. So thank you.